and hello there good evening hope you're keeping well i'm rob and uh, thanks for popping along and uh, watching rob's models here on twitch.tv forward slash rob's models i uh, hope you're keeping well um again it's uh following up from yesterday we're continuing with the Messerschmitt bf 109 and this is the tamiya 1 to 70 no it's not it's the 1 to 48 scale um 1 to 70 second that's what i'm going to be doing later uh, so if you've been watching yesterday it was a case of uh, putting on the camouflage uh, fortunately um, someone stopped me just as I was about to be painting it because I uh, realized I'd actually done one of the where well, they realized that I'd actually uh, masked up one of the uh, the left wing the um, port wing in reverse I'd ma I'd already got the gray on and then masked up where the gray um, <laughs> to paint the green over the gray that I'd already done so um yeah a little bit um yeah glad, glad someone stopped me just uh check that i was doing uh what i was meant to be doing so uh, that's actually all looking good so i took the masking off yesterday as well and uh, if you had been watching you would have seen that there was actually when i took it off it turns out i'd actually missed a bit of the gray i hadn't actually put enough gray down so there was a bit of a patch where the primer was showing through i was going to fix that in today's stream but so i could actually crack on with some other bits today I quickly um, fi um, fixed that today. It was literally just a two minute job of needed to put a bit more gray on. So I just put a bit of masking over the green that I put on yesterday. Now that I'd actually had um, an overnight to cure, I could then just spray it in. There was another little area up there on that part that just needed a bit more. And then just done a little bit more there. Issue starting stream, Rob. Not as far as I know, um, but I don't think so. Um, I hopefully we're streaming. Um, as far as I know, ah. Issue starting stream. Ah, is that, um, I'm assuming that, um, is it actually coming through or have I actually, um, I'm chatting away to myself. Uh, have we not got anything then? Oh, right. I thought a few min uh, meant five minutes. Oh, okay. Right. No, I was, um, actually, sorry. I, I, uh, well, yeah, weird thing is, it doesn't actually show that I'm streaming on my um, on my computer screen, actually, which is very bizarre. I'm just going to um, refresh that. Took tw Oh, yeah, by the time I did that one, I put it in there, then I'd done Discord, then I'd done a few bits, and then I remembered about something that I'd done actually afterwards that I hadn't actually set up on OBS. Uh, so I actually spent, yeah, five minutes um, doing it. When you see it later, you will definitely think it was worth the wait, but apologies for that. And actually, yes, it is streaming. Um... I was paranoid then because it made me look at my screen and um, it actually didn't show. My stream manager didn't show that I was streaming actually. So how bizarre. Anyway, that's all working now. So yes, um, yeah, so I was just setting some bits up and you'll see what I was setting up later. Um, anyway, yeah, so I got all that fixed up earlier and then wrote myself a to-do list of what I need to do. Uh, also to save a little bit of time, oh no, another cringy animation of that would be uh, ruining it um, and I put a bit of um, yellow on some stuff so it needs a little bit more yellow and then I thought yeah really ahead of the game on this one that's uh, there's some of that actually the pre-shading because it's yellow the pre-shading's really you know um, yeah coming through on that one and yellow is never the thickest and a bit more actually needs a bit more on, the, on that rudder as well and then after I'd done it all, I realised that actually I'd forgot to do a bit on here anyway, so I messed that up. So I think first job at the moment is just to get a bit more yellow on there. Then what we can do is actually um, start uh, getting ready to put the gloss coat on. And once the gloss coat's on, we can leave that 24 hours to dry and then crack on with um, detailing and all those sort of things with the engine, which will be good. So if I grab the yellow out... This is one of those things that I wanted to get all done earlier. Are those, uh, hang on, uh, what are those yellow parts mounted on? Yeah, these are the things that I forgot that I needed to do yellow. So in fact, some of it I actually snapped off uh, so I could do. So uh, on that, you've kind of got a bit under, under the chin. Basically, the lower cowling is yellow and the uh, rudder. But there's two yellow um, lower cowlings, one for the open position, one for the closed position. So I need to do two. They both look from this side. I mean, obviously not at the moment they don't look, but they're, they're both the same this side, at least. Um, hang on, and I'm not actually covering them up. But on the other side, one is open and it hasn't got much detail. Well, it's got more detail in there and stuff. And that one has basically just, um, just got a magnet in 
because this was the one that will be displayed in the open position. It's got a lot more finer detail in. That one hasn't. It's just basically a lump with a magnet in. Uh, so that will be um, goes under the chin and they will be interchangeable. I snapped the rudder off um, because actually that's painted separately. So um, I can uh, reattach that one. And also that will be um, it's slightly bent over to one side as well, which is fine. So now that's done. So I'll get a bit of um, yellow on these and um, I might need to just keep a bit of yellow in there and uh, come back to it because yellow is never a... Um, doesn't really give great coverage. So I'll start with that, uh, do these, and then I also made a bit more um, work with the, um, what's it called? And, uh, hang on, oh yeah, oh, uh, sorry. Oh, Epic Forger, <laughs> one, two, three, get four, one, two, three, four, yeah. So mate, I forgot to say hi as well, because um, yeah, I was worried that I wasn't streaming at all. So um, yeah, cheers for popping along as well. Hope you're well, hope you're enjoying your Sunday. Apologies for not shouting out earlier, I'm glad Glad Cube Jam is, is on it. Oh, God, right. So what I'll do is I'll dust on a bit of um, this yellow. I'm not too sure if this... I, I was going to say I'm not too sure if this is the right yellow. Um, I know this isn't the, the correct yellow. Um, I think this is a bit brighter than the, the, the proper yellow should be. However, by the time it all gets weathered down, my thinking is I'm uh, not going to do any... Um, uh, what am I not going to be doing? I'm, I'm not basically going to be spending a couple of quid and a couple more quid postage just to get another thing of yellow, which is a slightly different shade to the yellow that I've actually already got. Um, probably, I know I should, maybe for the next build. Um, so I just thought I'd just use the yellow that I've got, if that's okay. Uh, and by the time I get the weathering on there, no one will know the difference. So, and uh, no, you didn't do any strappers, uh, any snapping today. No, I did see you were on, that was, that was funny, because I'd been, I saw you were on, and I just managed to get on, and I just sort of, instead of just going straight on there and doing the, hi, I'm here, everyone, and stuff, you know, what's happening? I was just sort of like, oh, you, you know, you were doing a few bits, I was like, oh, I'll just let everyone have a bit of a chat and everything, and then what was quite funny is just, just as I then set, I started settling myself in to see what was happening, um, you went, anyway, that map wraps me up. I was like, ah, oh, for... Because <laughs> the funny thing was, I also noticed that uh, Kit Checker was on. And I thought, oh, I'll, I'll put, I'll, I chose you over Kit Checker. I know I can multi-stream and stuff, but... I was just on my phone earlier, having a quick sneaky look on my phone. Going on a bit too thick. Well, that was a bit like it was like the reverse of uh, last night. Oh, Annie Cav, hello, Annie Cav, how are you? Haven't seen you for a while. Hope you are well, enjoying the weekend or what's left of it. But it was like last night when I went to, um, yeah, fin finished. Every lit there was no one. My thing said there were people on, and literally as I went on to them, they were um, just um, they they'd finished streaming about a minute before. <laughs> Couldn't believe that. I oh, uh, yeah, doing good, busy with school. Okay, all oh, right. I didn't know with all restrictions and things around everywhere who's doing stuff now but um cool glad that you're keeping busy and and more importantly glad that you're keeping well as well right actually I'm just trying to dry this off a little bit problem with these Vallejo paints they do take uh, a while to dry Oh, what I have done, I'll just explain as well. Whilst I was uh, putting the green on today, I put on, there's still two little uh, aerial bits to go on the bottom. I don't know if they're aerial bits, they're things on the bottom. But I've started putting on some of the detail bits on the top. Uh, just because I thought they needed to be painted green, I can do that whilst I was touching up a few other bits. The thing is, that is now um, 
I don't I really should probably open a book how many times am I going to knock off that little aerial uh, in the process of finishing this plane I mean what I should do and I know what I should do is logically I should paint them but not glue them on so then when it's all ready at the very last minute I can just little dab of glue put them on and go right they're done but I always like but then I think if I do that and things don't get weathered at the same time it will look odd so I am risking it and I know that I'm risking it and I just hope that if I knock them off I don't lose them or, or break them. Uh, I sort of reached a point where I need to do the decals um, and the clear before I can glue the rest of the car together. Uh, to be honest I'm thinking I'm going to be reaching the same point uh, with this um, soon because at the moment and like I know exactly what it was like when you were today saying if I do this that's not dry yet it's going to go wrong because that's actually what I got to the point last night is, and the previous few sessions with the 109 is I've got to points where I've realised that if I was to do anything I'm going to be things won't be dry properly and I'll be you know masking up paint which is touch dry on the surface but not cured properly underneath and that all kind of seems to look good but you start pulling bits off that's when it goes wrong uh you need to finish your thesis this week oh hang on um annie i was gonna say is that the thesis which was the um the psychological i can't remember what it was now um it was a psych psychology type thing wasn't it am i um i know oh, it was um about getting persuaded to do stuff no am i am i imagining that i know it was a it was a while back when you said what you were doing i know it was really interesting have i or have i just muddled it up with something uh i changed it to how the world is uh made out of well made out of lines now that's even more confusing how the world is made out of lines lines of lines of what so that begs the question i know you've come on here so you can take your mind off of doing your thesis and I'm asking you questions about it instead. Or is that the point that it's one of those things where it's meant to be confusing? Yeah, I'm having absolutely no problems with the pre-shading. I, I mean, I literally lost the pre-shading on the top. As soon as the paint left the airbrush nozzle, the pre-shading, no matter how thick it was, literally just vanished. The bottom, because that was actually, you know, that took like three light coats and I still got a bit of the shading coming through which is actually just what I want in fact um, I actually knocked it back a little bit more after the other stream the other day but the top pre-shading um, no now it's actually had the green on it's just gone oh I thought I was going to sneeze then um, no that didn't okay that just only come from nowhere and then went as quick as it come um, no no that's fine um yeah, so lost the pre-shading on that one. However, the pre-shading that I'd put on there, I mean, this has had this has had its third or fourth coat, and it's still just. Um, I mean, my thinking is it's the engine cowling, so it's, it's going to look dirty and grubby. So once I get a bit of weathering wash on there, however, I forgot to put pre-shading on that part, so that is obviously now going to be a lot more cleaner. So I'm actually, if anything, trying to get more yellow on this one, just because um, there's going to be a bit of a discrepancy between the two. Um, well, you could see that uh, trees are just lines, branches coming up the stem are just lines, coming out of a big line. Oh, God, right, okay, so it's almost like chaos theory of, um, what is it, um, oh, fract fractals, when you break stuff down and you keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller, uh, it's, like, oh, it's almost like the same shape repeating over and over, that sort of thing. Uh, I'm glad uh, following the greats with my pre-shading then. Yes, oh, God, I knew, I mean, trust me. I knew before I'd even done the pre-shading that was going to be happening with this. So don't worry. No, you were not the, um, no, um, I mean, I, and it's not like I went on, oh, like absolutely crazy layering on thick. Although actually the first coat I did put down, I did have the air pressure up quite high. Uh, so it did blast a bit more of the color out over it. So I did lose the pre-shading. I lost the pre-shading quicker than I was expecting, but that didn't mean I, you know, I was expecting to lose the pre-shading. Let's put it that way. Right, I'm going to um, come back and give that another coat of yellow in a bit, just so it doesn't dry up. I just put a bit of a cleaner just through the airbrush a bit, just so it doesn't the paint itself doesn't dry up. Now I think I've even done um, right. 
Yeah, so, I mean, this is a little uh, Airfix 190 that I did um, last year now. And pre-shading on the bottom, actually, now I've got the weathering and the panel line in there. The pre-shading, again, doesn't show through. Actually, it kind of does. You can sort of make it out a bit of pre-shading on there. So this is a little Airfix 190, 1 to 70 second scale. Bit of pre-shading come through on the bottom. Yeah, that's right. And it's the same colours, exactly the same paints. Looks nice, bit of, you know, panel line, makes the details pop, flip it over. Uh, no pre-shading. I mean, there was pre-shading, but again, um, once the uh, once the darker paint goes over with those Luftwaffe colours, it just goes. In fact, I didn't even bother trying to pre-shade it when I done the um, Mosquito because I knew on the top there wasn't a huge amount of panel lines going on anyway and it was going to be dark colours but something like the Osprey that I did uh, that really benefited from pre-shading because that was basically varying shades of light grey and therefore pre-shading can actually show through it a bit better I won't give this a massive clean out because I'll be putting the yellow back into it again in a minute. But just mainly so it just doesn't seize up. Cool. Right. That is that done. What we'll now do is flick from this kit to the um, resin one. So, yeah, that's... I was going to say, Annie, that's, yeah, that sounds definitely a bit of a um, a, a very odd topic, <laughs> very confusing. But um, yeah, the things of, um, yeah, fractal sort of things, it's, uh, yeah, pretty interesting. So what I've used for this is uh, some perfect plastic putty, and this afternoon I um, put a bit of that putty on here, uh, basically just a filler. Didn't actually need it very much. Um, Hang on, uh, I'm following uh, the greats of the pre-show. Uh, I'm just going to get this next kit out of my... Yes, oh, it's, it is... It's, yeah, I mean, to be honest, I knew I was getting something small and I thought that would be funny, but the fact that actually the thing just sits in the palm of my hand, um, yeah, is actually... It, it does make me chuckle because I obviously like to do things that, you know, why, why do something simple when I could actually just be silly? Is probably the best way to put it um, so you might see there's a few little white lines just in the wing roots just use a bit of the perfect plastic putty and what I actually did was to uh, water it down actually in a mini um, mince pie foil wrapper put a blob of that a little a few drips of water mixed it up just so it made it more of a um, more of a paste than an actual um, I mean basically because it was so small it was easier to work oh Ian Hello there, Ian. <laughs> or as um, as everyone likes to call you, Australian Ian. <laughs> oh, that made me laugh when you said no one can actually say your name, Australian Ian. Um, <laughs> how are you? You are. Oh God, hey, and I was just saying about having you know everyone having a good weekend and Sunday evening and stuff. But for you, oh, it's what Monday morning. <sighs> Sorry, mate. I just reminded you. You've just got up. Alarm's gone off, and it's ready for your week ahead. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, so I've whacked on. Um, I've slapped a little bit more on the bottom than necessary just because there was a little bit of a seam line on there and there was the bubbles. But where the wing roots had gone in, I've just put a little, you know, a little bit on there and then essentially wiped it back off with a damp cotton bud just to leave the little bit actually in the recesses. So there was hardly any gaps, but I thought for the sake of it i did have to get it out i might as well if i want to do it i might as well do it properly so actually what i should probably do is um i forgot to take a picture of that earlier for um the old discord buddy build thing so i'll just do a quick snap uh, hang on. that one and i'll flip it over and then uh can share in there what a mess i've made of that bottom side so what I need to do is rub that down. I know it's resin, but I actually all I'm doing is uh, the resin itself has all been rubbed and sanded. And all I'm doing is just going to be taking off the um, what is it? Um, the uh, the filler. So just to sand that down. 
don't need to do that on the actually I might just do it a little bit and actually what I was also going to do is to um, just to uh, maybe rub this over the um, camo on the uh, the 109 as well I just had a oh no it's there so obviously don't want to breathe in any uh, resin dust but I'm not actually rubbing into the resin I'm actually just going to be effectively actually what I could do is I do have a little bit of water there wet sand this anyway just to be safe there we go that's the water yeah a while back I bought some little dropper bottles they're not really squeezy but um, they're useful for just for having decanting bigger things so I've got some uh, water in there I got one of the IPA got one with sort of airbrush cleaner and stuff in and that's just useful for um, when you just want a little bit you can just uh, drop a little dropper bottle Okay, that was um basically that was more just wiping it off than rubbing it off. So have you had that heat wave come over yet, um Ian? But the one that the Wiz was talking about when it got up to silly Or is the uh, have you got past the hottest part of the yeah, have you got past the hottest part of the year? Because traditionally, uh Northern Hemisphere or at least in the UK, our hottest months tend to be the sort of the um, sort of July, August time, which I guess transposes over to you to sort of um, being sort of like the January, February time. So I don't know whether you're you're still heating up or whether you're cooling down or right in the right in the midst of the uh, the hot weather. OK, now I've got a little pin here as well. I'm going to just use this just to clear out some of the um, filler that's just got in some of the the recess details. I don't know if I need to... Do I risk doing it with a rescribing tool? Actually, let's try this. Uh, yeah, is that? Let's try it on the bottom first, on one of the, the bits that you won't see. What this is is this is one of those tools that uh, the dentist used to uh, hook hook stuff out of your mouth, sort of like out your teeth, a real, uh, real pointy, vicious sort of um, bit of steel. But it's also very useful for um, rescribing. You know, you can sort of it's got you know quite a nice. Um, it's a, a quite a fine solid point and there's a, a lot cheaper to buy a set of dental tools on Amazon than it is to buy like the um in, buy something designed for model makers or you know basically you know, rebranded for model makers Right, this uh, we didn't have a hot for a while, but the summer has been cut. <laughs> so it's been a, been a cold summer. But you've been out on the beach with the dog and that sort of thing. I am kind of regretting doing something this small now. Because you just can't get the tools in to do it. Right. Oh, I've got that I've got a splodge of super glue I need to remove as well. I forgot about that. Yeah, you think you've had a cold summer. You should have. Um, you you should have. Uh, you you should have been in the UK for our hot summer. We've just you know, 
2020 was a hot summer. We know that was a hot summer because we wanted to stay in and not go out in it. Cool. Micro tools. Are there actually, what, is there actually tools designed for doing stupid small things? Oh, well, there probably would be, actually. And they're probably called something like micro tools. Right, so that is now filled in. Oh, to Jesus. That's so small and lightweight, it literally just flips around. Right, clean that off. And now what we'll do um, is, okay, I need to put some uh, primer on here. But I just realised I don't want to do that yet because I'm going to use the um, airbrush for the um, yellow. Right. Okay, so if I hold this up, hopefully you can probably see a load of white little dots on there. Those are just the little bubbles that have now been filled and smoothed off. So that should mean that once that, that gets the paint on there, that should be a nice finish. And the, this has actually got to be done in a, um, oh, in a, and just, yeah, filling in the, a few gaps in there as well. Uh, but this is going to be painted in white and a, a gloss white, which is always a, a bit of a, a tough paint. So what I'm going to do, I've decided, the, is paint all of this, prime it and then paint it. And then effectively the extra bits, the cockpit, uh, drops in. <laughs> so um, it's basically the cockpit is a, um, yeah, basically I think it's going to be easier to paint all of that, paint it all inside because it was all, it was a, all a single fiberglass construction. So may uh would have meant that the interior walls and everything would have been white so i'll just literally do all inside and out white then come back to it and then start detailing i think that's going to be the best plan at the moment for that uh that's again my my thinking on that one so uh i'll just blow a bit of um a bit more yellow in there just to yellow these final little bits up a bit more now that's had a couple of minutes to dry well, then I can get on and prime that. Starting to do this with a bit of efficiency now. That's uh, scary. But I did notice actually today it's been a little bit more um, on the old Twitch model building side of things. It uh, looks to have been a bit more uh, busier today. Typically, which is the day which is a bit more um, I was unable to. Uh, well, I was doing a few bits and pieces and you know how it is. Right, just uh, so we got a bit more on there. Oh, uh, let's not keep chucking that around. Let's move that over there out the way so it doesn't fall off. I know I was moaning a while back about the um, how big the uh, the Osprey was and it you know taking up so much room, but perhaps I should. Um, just go into just uh, making a uh, small little um 70 second kits or um 144 scale Be a bit more space efficient get that cracked on a bit give that a shake and away we go what no snacks uh not snack time yet snack time will be uh in about half hour or so, I guess. Yeah, so um, yeah, gotta gotta keep keep you keep you on. I, I don't go straight in with a snackage. I gotta gotta build up to the snackage. Forty minutes. I mean, this pre-shading under the yellow is really coming through. How can you stream without snacks? Um, I by having a quick cup of tea before I even started. <laughs> I don't. I'd only had me only had my dinner about half hour ago.
Should have put in a put him a snack or, snack order. Actually, I I have I have snackage in my streams, and uh, Cube Jam has snappage. Although saying that, I did have uh, quite a loud ping the other day. Was um yeah uh, no yesterday wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Can anyone actually paint yellow, or is it just a myth? I have heard of people who can apparently paint yellow. But I do feel as though that is just a fable. The fabled art of painting yellow. Yeah, not worried about actually having perfect yellow because it is going to be a bit weathered and that sort of thing. Uh, hi, my eyes on a Porsche uh, 911 and some yellow. Oh, I think, well, actually, if you go bang in and you're using the right primer and all that sort of thing, then uh, uh, you've got to go again and have a good nice stream. Cheers. Thanks very much, Fanny, for popping by. It was good to catch up with you. Good luck with your dissertation and stuff, the thesis. Hope that goes well. Um, once you've done it, what you have to do, and you've got a bit more time and your brain's a bit more, you know, um, up for it, give us a bit more of a, a breakdown because genuinely that does sound um, does sound interesting. Um, I, and uh, yeah, I'd love to know how you, what your, uh, what, how that goes for you. It sounds definitely a bit of an interesting subject. So um, yeah, even if, even if it's just summarize your conclusions, <laughs> summarize your conclusions in in one one um small um yeah uh, one small twitch um chat comment that's what that's all we need <laughs> we need the whole premise and conclusions but cheers thanks again for popping along catch you soon and good luck with the dissertation okay let's leave those to uh, dry somewhere what i now need to do is put them kind of somewhere safe but i'll end up knocking that's uh, the standard for it. So uh, let's. Oh, hang on, pop them over there. Now I've not had any major accidents with any of this stuff yet, so. Um, not with this kit so i'm eagerly anticipating to knock something over send something flying so i just want to give this a clean out because the next stuff i'm putting in there is the the uh the lacquer uh lacquer primer stuff And it was last time I was mixing between types of um, primers and paints and stuff is when everything all started gumming up and spitting. So let's make sure that I kind of give this, I mean, I should be going in the right direction with this because I'm taking out clean use, finishing up using sort of like a quite, you know, uh, basically, to, uh, what's it? Um, Vallejo model air acrylic and we'll be going uh, to something a little bit more hotter. So I think it was the other time when I was using the sort of lacquery type smelly stuff and then put a Vallejo model air into the airbrush. That's when things started to go to, um, started literally gumming up. Literally the airbrush stopped working and I ended up removing lumps of basically rubbery goo from uh, the inside the airbrush nozzle. In, in the oh god i'm losing the ability to speak today inside the airbrush nozzle that's the phrase i meant to say so touch more of that all right that should be fine right so um let's get gloved up again actually um 
All right, part of me was thinking that what I should be doing is getting, um, because I'm going to be using, there it is, the use the white primer again, uh, AK Interactive stuff. And I'm going to be, the model's going to be white, so um, it makes sense to use the white primer. And part of me thinks, oh, this is the stuff where I need to have a um, set up the spray booth, get all of that set up. And yes, normally I would do. However, as the model is actually only that big, um, I think I can sort of, I, to be honest, I think I'll skip the spray booth for now. That should be fine. But um, yeah, how am I going to hold this? There are some um, just wondering whether I'm going to be doing inside and out. Do I have? I've got a little small reverse action ones. They might be better. Yeah, all right, let's give that a go. You will use those. But I don't think I'm going to have enough in here to proper gas myself, so it should be fine by how much I'm going to be using. And if I do, then that will just add to the hilarity of the stream. Okay, so um, this is the micro uh, primer and micro filler. And uh, I'm going to use this stuff because there are, you know, obviously I've put a little bit of filler and stuff in there. So going on to resin as well, it's not a plastic kit, it is resin. So I'm going to want to make sure I actually give, I get a proper primer on there for it to uh, for it be working on too. Give this uh, a bit of a go over. Oh, what I should do actually, um, if I put a bit of IPA in, that should just get rid of any uh, any hints of the Vallejo in there and make the room smell nice. Work out some hose management. I'm only wanting a little bit of this for now. Get the lid back on that before I shake it up. Oh, this sucks, Rob. Is going to get high and, <laughs> and I have to go. Yeah. <laughs> you wait until I start singing. You know. Um, God knows what I'll be singing. Yes, I've got the door. I'm in a very small room with the door closed. I do think, actually, perhaps what I should do, although actually, yeah, I'm actually, yeah, I, I should do. What I'm going to do, health and safety kids, is, let me know a bit there. I think that's probably for the best. I'm going to uh, get me, uh, get the old mask on. Actually, just out of, yeah, because I'm, so, I know it's only a little, can't be asked to set up the whole spray booth, but I probably should just at least put the mask on, so I'm not really going to be giving a whole commentary on this. Just whilst to do my Darth Vader impression again. Uh, this stuff really does stink when it gets going. Right. What? Why is that not working? Oh no, hang on. As I say that, I think I have, um, that's reacted, hasn't it? Well, I just gummed up me, um, I think I've made a boo-boo on that one. Some things, I've got a lump of something in there. 
Right, no, okay. Right, what did I put in? Okay, something's definitely not gone right in that one. Oh dear, oh dear indeed. Okay. Right. Let's get that out. Yeah, I think what I've uh, I've been a cock basically. I've tried to um, try to save a couple of minutes uh, by making it worse. Right. Okay. Where's the? Where would I have put my airbrush cleaning stuff? Uh, in that one. what I've gone and done um, maybe it's not yeah right which way round uh, yeah all right let's take the nozzle off I'm just going to try to take it all straight out the front so what's obviously happened I think actually I think it might be the IPA that reacted with. Yeah. The uh, isopropyl alcohol, actually. Which I wouldn't have thought would have been the case, but I think it is. Hmm. Well, this makes it exciting, because otherwise I'd have been uh, doing this and then gone, right, okay, that's everything done for the day. Yeah, something's definitely reacted in here, and I've got a, a few gooey lumps in here. And then Ian think, thought he was going to be missing out, and actually, Ian, all you're doing is missing me. Um, mess up my basically, you have to strip clean an airbrush instead. Uh, yeah, some things definitely gummed up. Now what I should do, I have actually got some cheap hairbrushes that basically come with uh, the compressor when I got it. I used, one of them's no, never been used and one of them I used a couple of times. And then got the uh, Iowata Neo instead. Neo, or the, or the Neo by Iowata, or the other way around, whichever one it is. And now, thinking that perhaps what I should do is resurrect one of those old airbrushes and use it as a um, one for putting in the, la you know, the lacquery type, the hot stuff, shall we say. And uh, and then have one where I just use for the acrylics. But saying that, when I then do Tamiya stuff, I mix it with the IPA, which is sort of like a hot... Um, Oh, I need. I need to. I need to learn my chemicals. You know what? Uh, what thinners goes with what? And then basically more, so I know what to avoid. Yeah, it's all a bit. Uh, it's all gone a bit gummy in here. Let's just push that the wrong way, the blunt end through, just so it acts like a plunger. Right. Typical. I guess this is the side of modelling that you never see on YouTube videos. Um, 
I don't like using these, but needs must sometimes, and this is a need that must. Ah, there we go, another lump of... Well, actually, that lump of was blacky coloured. Oh, God. Last time I had black in this stuff was when I was doing the pre-shading, so perhaps it was that. What I'll do is I'll get it cleaned out and then uh, don't put anything in there bar the, um, the, f the actual uh, primer. That's only kicking a bit loud then. Right, I think we're getting there. Yeah, I have to dig out. I think it will be sensible to dig out the um, mixing and matching my bits. At least just dig out a uh, another airbrush. So in future, if it happens again, at least I can just reach over and have one, have a cheap and cheerful one, at least ready to go for emergencies. Definitely something that's not been too, uh, something definitely wasn't happy in there, let's put it that way. Let's not stab that into my finger. Right, that's all coming out clean. Cool, right. And let's reassemble back on with our lives. That was all clean. Done that. I was thinking what I might do. Oh dear, uh, I've got an emergency uh, whiskey <laughs> bar light bulb poncho. <laughs> Rob's got an emergency airbrush. Right. <laughs> I do actually have a sort of a small emergency kit next to me, actually. Just, um, but it's actually more just my camping stuff that I've not put in the loft. But I thought, actually, that makes for an emergency bug out bag. <laughs> I have also found over the years that the the needle pokes out of the nozzle a lot further than I'm sure it used to when I first got this. I know people do replace their nozzles and stuff after a while. And needles. Right, let's try that again. Um, and see how we get on this time round. So, where were we? Getting that on. Trying to fit two fingers in one finger. Get rid of that one that I do on. Tidy this up. I mean, I am spending more <laughs> longer cleaning the airbrush out than it will actually take me to put primer on this thing. Cool. Right. Let's give that another crack and uh, see how we get on from there. A few more squares of kitchen roll out the ready. Right. So are we going to take bets as to does this work or do I end up crying? Seriously, it is 50-50 at the moment. Lid on. Shake. What I need, I really should get round to having like a, a, um, a reminder in front of me to, this says lid on. Right, there 
let's try this again. Now I'm not going to, normally at this point I'd blow a bit of water through or a bit of IPA or something just to make sure things are working okay. But I daren't put anything else in this airbrush at the moment because just in case that's the thing that's then reacting and making things gum up. Because to be honest, I thought IPA pretty much could, you know, worked with everything. And uh, maybe it does, just not, um, not this primer. Okay, I've got white coming through. I mean, obviously, actually, you're just looking at a load of white on white there, actually. Um, I know I keep, oh, I was going to get masked up as well, because already, just after that little spray, I'm going to get this on. I need to look into what the world record is for the smallest plane, because I'm thinking, I'm getting, getting close to it in this. Right, there we go. I do realise as I'm doing this, it's just going to disappear, isn't it? So if you want to do it like that. At least the airbrush hasn't gummed up yet. Okay, so that's the first coat just to give it a light dusting. Lurking it, doing farm sim. Oh, fair enough. It's getting to that time of year. Right, a little bit more of this, lid on. Oh, you top. More just not focusing on what I'm doing there. Oh, is Otto in there? Hi, Otto. Hi, Otto. So I'm just spraying some not very nice primer stuff. So I I say yellow properly in a second, but tears are popping in.
Okay, right. I was say, if, my, if I put that on there, I don't know if you're going to see it. Right, I'll just give this a bit of a quick clean out. Lids on out of there. And then, actually, let's just put that in. I just want to see if that's what gums it up. It sounds odd, I'm deliberately trying to gum my airbrush up now. Right, that. Okay, that is not liking that. Hang on. Oh. Oof. Actually, I'm glad I had that on because there's definitely a bit of a pong in the room. Right, I've got a feeling that I just put a bit of this airbrush cleaner in there. Oh, Jaffa is in as well. Hello, hello there, Jaffa, and hello, Otto. Sorry about that. I had me um. Had the old mask on actually because spraying that primer stuff around it's a small room with the windows shut it's, for doing a plane that size it seems silly getting out the whole um spray booth and all that sort of thing then but uh i just thought you know, might as well should at least put on the mask but yes so now got the uh, um i got the uh the quickie a one to 70 second scale <laughs> It's very small, uh, about two and a half inches long this is, but one to 70 second scale, that has now got the white primer on. So it's a resin kit, so I want to make sure I've got a, um, yeah, a good sort of pri bite base primer on there as well. So yeah, got the, got the primer in, but because the airbrush just gummed up just now, I'm just trying to work out what is reacting with what. Uh, so I don't think it liked that too much. Where was my um? Where's my? Uh, oh, there, there it is. IPA. Maybe it was that one that didn't like it. So whilst I've got a bit of residue of that stuff, I'm just put you putting in different cleaning fluids, just to see which one. And I think it's the acrylic stuff. So I'll probably have to give the airbrush another strip down later because I think I've just gummed it up. But that seems to be pulling through. Actually, I do have. I'll do it when the when the uh, when the windows open. I do actually have some airbrush cleaner stuff, which I don't use very often because it's very hot. As in. Um, I actually used it a while back on a model when I was doing rescribing. Uh, let's pop over here for a bit actually. I was doing uh, rescribing and it really started to tear up the plastic, the rescribing thing. So uh, I actually brushed some of that onto the plastic and it basically melted it back. I'm sure it's basically like, it's 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 basically more more glue than airbrush cleaner by the thing of it. As in, you know, the um, Tammy, it's more like a big bottle of Tammy or extra thin I think. Uh, absolutely reeks. Uh, I always enjoy coming and watching somebody who actually knows what he's doing. Oh God, don't say that to me. I'm I'm learning by. Oh, if you had seen me just now gumming up my airbrush, and go, oh, why has that happened? <laughs> Mummy, my airbrush broke. <laughs> uh, pretty much. So uh, I think I'm gonna yeah, I'll strip it down properly later. We'll see how we get on there. Let's try and get some of the, the bigger lumps out. So yeah, so so what I might do is later on just give it a bit of a go. But I don't want to um I don't know whether this airbrush has got the PTFE seals in or rubber, because if it's got rubber seals, uh, the paint that I used was the um AK um hang on, let's go let's go back onto that one. Uh use that as the primer. But I've actually just been using Vallejo paint and then gave it a clean out with IPA. And I think, um, no, um, yeah, so somewhere along between them, that's something, and the other day I did it in the reverse order and it gummed up, where I was using this, um, basically used that AK Interactive Microprimer and then uh, I then rinsed things out and then went onto the AK Interactive 
and something in one of the thinners or one of the paints or one of the cleaning things obviously is not um, not liking and I do seem to have you know I must admit I, I do do one of those oh you've, I do a bit of this I do a bit of that and I think of that you know that attitude to things and just saying I should probably have a different airbrush for you know one for hot products or one for not hot products but saying that when I use Tamiya paints which isn't technically uh, a hot product I do like to mix it with IPA so then it's a bit of a, a mixture but there we now have um, already I've knocked some of the primer off um, that's fine I can fix that up that's uh but let's pop it on there so there's the resin kit it's the little rutan quickie what airbrush um the airbrush is a neo by iowata uh cn which is which is a 0.35 needle in there which isn't um it's not um i call it a, a mid-range it's the ford focus of airbrushes my thinking it's not like a really fine tip but it's not a really big one it's a bit of a one size fits all but it's not great for it's not like it's a real you know really good for detailed work or really good for massive coverage but my thinking is if you're only going to have one airbrush for me um and you're, and you're on a budget as well uh i think it's a good all-rounder you know it does, doesn't do anything amazingly but is um, good enough just for everything. You can see I've just already just chipped a little bit, and where this is resin, um, it's obviously just doesn't, you know, where I'd put those tweezers on to hold it. I got it. Um, I'd guess it's got the rubber seals. I think, I, oh, yeah, that's the thing, is when I do put the, when I do use the more hotter airbrush cleaner in there, I do um, blow it through, you know, very, very soon afterwards with plenty of water to flush it all out. That's why I don't like using that stuff because I do find it a bit of a bit too hot. But if things all start gumming up, um, yeah, and I am, I have had it for a few years now and I do think that I, the, the, the body itself is fine. I don't need to get a new airbrush at the moment, I don't think. I mean, if I, you know, if, if I had, you know, I wouldn't turn one down, let's put it that way. But if I, you know, did get one, um, yeah, I'm thinking what I mean, it might be a good time to sort of invest in a new set of um, a new set of seals um, and a new nozzle and a new needle for it because I say the the needle does seem to come through the nozzle further than what it used to. Um, that sort of thing. I think over the time, you know, things have got a little bit of a nudge and stuff. Ah, hello. There was a knock on the door. So hang on a moment. If I just do this. Now that was worth waiting for. Was that not worth waiting for? <laughs> She's a uh, um, yes by four minutes. Probably saw me gashing myself and swearing over my airbrush. So I uh, hopefully that was worth. You can you can all go now. Now that was the new that was the new animation. <laughs> hopefully the um, hopefully had the music to that as well. That was uh, a good part of my day was on that one. Not impressed. No explosion. There was an explosion. <laughs> there was a. So I had to, I had to have a bit of an explosion in there, just to, uh, yes. So anyway, um, today we have got oh, actually, uh, two two digestives, regular plain digestives, four cubes of chocolate, of Cadbury's chocolate, and of course, a cup of tea. What more do we need? So yeah, that was about two hours of my morning spent on that one. <laughs> Probably not quite two, but um, yeah. I've got to say, it did make me chuckle. Well done. It was worth it was worth waiting for. <laughs> uh, could be worse. I spent three hours of organising my build albums on Flickr. Oh, right. Okay. I haven't used... Is Flickr still... I mean, obviously, it's still going. But uh, I've, I'm pretty sure I've got a Flickr account. What's the one... Is that the one where... Basically, it's... You can store... I mean, obviously, yeah, you can store your pictures on there. But can you link to them to embed them? Because I, I did have one a while back where I used to put quite a lot of my model photos on, and then they decided that they were going to stop doing it for free. 
and that if you actually wanted it you had to um you had to pay and i know loads of people lost loads of photos because i think if you didn't pay then your your login expired or something i mean i think the company ended up going back on that one because they realized that uh they thought they could make a quick couple of bucks basically hold people's pictures to ransom but i think so many people um not just complained but just you know went a little uh, you know slightly annoyed that was a few years back now uh, one thing I do need to do on this is to fix one of the flaps that I managed to break off after spending the last week carefully trying not to do that. So whilst I do it, I'm going to do uh, I'm not sure if anyone asks for pics, I just send them a link. <laughs> uh, not sure. Yeah, people, people don't actually ask for pictures, you just send it to them anyway. I'm hoping I'm hoping it's pictures of your models though, Jaffa. You're not, you know, you're sending unsolicited picture, model modelling pictures. So, okay, that just needs to go back on there. Spent all the time keeping this masked up. And I, when I was removing the masking yesterday, this was starting to have a little bit of a wobble. And I got the masking off and it was fine. And then today, slight touch and bang, there it went, predictably. But that's fine. It was just a little uh, one of the little um, one of the little uh, flaps uh, just on there that I just managed to take off, so not a big deal. And uh, yeah, we're good there. But again, put that on now whilst I remember because otherwise I end up losing it. So what I want to do is uh, oh yeah, all builds, nothing else. <laughs> Looks good. Cheers. So um, what I was thinking of doing is. Uh, before I next job to do is to um, basically decals on there um, is to before I, but before I do the decals I need to seal it so what I'll be doing is I'll be using my people either say this is great or because it's not a modeling product they they hate me and think I'm the devil is basically literally just used pledge for floor polish which isn't even the old one which if one says is the best one to use but I quite like that one because it doesn't give a really really shiny shine it um, just gives quite a it, it's more satin than shiny which I find is good enough for putting decals on getting without the silvering but without going full on gloss um, it, and it basically it's the stuff that I've got it seems to have worked for me so because I've still got you know a liter of it I mean I bought the thing five years ago and I've probably used about an inch of that actually where is the yeah I think it's probably up to about up to about there in it or something so uh 750 mil of the thing for a four quid or something stupid uh no point in me running out and spending 10 quid on a little pot or something that um that does the same job but has got a model you know but says mig on the front or something that's just maybe that's me being tight maybe that's me just um yeah thinking what's well, odd it, it works so why should i but what i was just going to do is use a very sort of worn soft sanding sponge just to knock back any minor edges where the uh, where the tape was just in a way just to rough say rough it should smooth the paint I don't really do this so I don't know why I'm doing this I just felt an urge to but as I said in um, my discord the other day um, or or one of the discords at least it gets confusing which one i type stuff in now um you know sometimes i i do i just sort of have an idea to go oh i do that um give it a go because i've not done it before i think if i done every if i used the same techniques for every model i'd probably get a bit bored after a while I just felt with this one, it just, I don't know why, it just felt like I needed to rub it over with a, a soft sponge just to help sort of remove, um, I mean, not that there was any steps or anything to it, but just to help smooth it down a little. Okay, I don't know why, just kind of got that sense to it. I 
I'm putting minimal pressure on as well. Yeah, I, I know loads. Yeah, I know. I I do. Um, loads of other people do, and but some people, because it's not a proper modelling product, um, sort of say, "Oh no, it's not as good as X Y Z," and I kind of think, "Well, sometimes maybe maybe it isn't, but." If it kind of does the job for me, and I've still got 700 mil of stuff to go, um, and over the time I've I've found out what sort of pressure, what sort of thickness to spray to spray it at, I'm going to stick with that uh, for the time being. I mean, what I might do is I might next time I'm in a shop or something, I might see uh, one of the other brands and go, actually, you know, it's cheaper to buy some of that than it is to buy a new kit. <laughs> That sometimes is a bit of a logic that can run through. Um, I think you just want, I just kind of felt like it. I didn't feel texture, but I just wanted to sort of just feel like I was blending some of the um, mottling in a little. It just sort of looked, it didn't feel raised, but some of those um, mottling effect did feel like it was just sort of sitting it wasn't, but it looked like it was sitting proud of the underlying paint. It didn't kind of look like it was blended. I mean, this is actually, in a way, also taking it down slightly on any of the, the raised areas as well. Not that there's many on this. But any sort of like raised little bits, I'm obviously just going to be thinning the paint a little bit more, not down to the primer, but uh, just in a way, sort of adding tonal variation. Would that be correct? Maybe I don't know. Am I just trying to justify what I'm doing? Uh, Alclad um, August gloss is a good one to use. Um, okay, um, I think that was the um, stuff. Was it? I mean, there's a few different ones out there. Um, uh, I stepped away for a few minutes. Um, is my mind playing tricks on me, or has the plane more morphed? I thought I saw you working on a little bit. I'm basically working between the two, Otto. So because this is so, because this is basically a case of getting bits on there, waiting for things to dry. It's kind of at that stage where it's a bit of a stop and start sort of thing, uh, where you kind of do stuff and you you kind of think, oh, I should move on. But you then, because um, you start, um, that's when accidents happen, so to speak. That's when uh, you start knocking bits or, um, you know, paint's not quite dry, those sort of things. So, no, your eyes are not deceiving you. I just want to give it a gentle, not enough to polish, just a little bit of a gentle rub before I put the clear coat on. I don't know why, I just felt the urge to. I don't normally do this. It's not like there was a, it wasn't a grainy sort of finish or anything to it. Right. Okay, so I don't think that's made any, you know, it feels actually, it does feel smoother. Not to say that it was feeling grainy or anything, but it just does feel smoother anyway. So let's just give it a quick wipe over just to, if there was any dust on there and then what I'll now do yeah just that has a small smoother again hopefully it probably hasn't made much difference but it feels like it's just knocking back they don't more they look more painted on rather than like um stuck on uh what grit using um don't this is the basically the softest flory models sanding sponge uh, so i don't actually know what grit it is but i've got a whole range going from you know real heavy duty sandpaper through to this the finest one is actually these which is actually used for um polishing um, actually, I might just give this a quick once over with this. Uh, polishing canopies. So he doesn't actually say what grit they are, because obviously he doesn't want people 
copying them. However, um, I don't tend to work on a basis of what grit things are anyway. I just tend to do the that you know I, I rub my thumb over and kind of just sort of feel yeah what sort of sort yeah flory that's the flory one. So I got a set of the flory sponges and also got the flory washes. And I've got to say, I mean, the flory washes as well are are good. I find um, someone on a Facebook group was commenting about them the other day and you know do it using because you sort of does the panel line wash and weathers at the same time it's not the best weathering and it's not the best panel line but for a one one size fits all it's you know you can't you know you can't knock it too much to be honest uh if you're only gonna if you're new to weathering and you just want to basically put something on it literally is a you know wax on wax off sort of thing gets in the panel lines and depending on how much you rub it um how much you take off depends on how much of the effect you get of it it's not uh you know they're not bad products actually so you might say you're getting right down to the nitty yeah i could say that yes <laughs> but uh yeah just really trying to just wanted to just to smooth the paint off before i put the clear on there um again didn't feel any lumps and it's not like i felt like there was a step on there not where but i just kind of just had that um felt that urge to but yeah these ones are actually you know you can actually from this range of um from the range you can go from having a really coarse one and do stuff right the way down so that you can sort of like then bring it up so you can polish a canopy up and get rid of seam lines in a canopy and you know and, and really polish you know a um a more modern jet canopy with it you know really give it a bit of shine uh, i mean in a way I and mean, you can almost hear it squeaking there yeah i'm really regretting putting those aerials on now <laughs> as i'm sticking them on even before i was doing it i was thinking i'm gonna regret doing that but you can hear where it's starting to squeak that means it's starting to uh yeah starting to polish up so in a, to be honest what you could do is actually just polish the model and then not even need to um, bother with uh, a clear coat you know in theory because the clear coat is really just putting on a, you know you're just getting rid of the lumps and bumps by filling in um, you know with a with a thin layer of you know, wax so I could just do this uh, however I, I will use the what's it right so so that's just sort of uh, giving it a bit of a rub again don't know if it's going to make a probably hasn't might made a blind bit of difference maybe a little bit you might notice a little bit more shine it kind of feels a bit smoother but it should mean that when i put that clear on there it will just have a not a more smoother surface which will then help with the decals as well uh, i won't although i've got these bits because i'd only just been painting them just a little bit ago I will clear coat these separately uh, probably tomorrow and actually I might want to put a little bit more yellow over these anyway just to um, give, make them all yellow to be perfectly honest um, some of that pre-shading is coming through that yellow a little bit too much uh, so you might yeah um, I've reread that <laughs> reading that also I think I've got deja vu um, so what I'll do as well is when this is cured I'll probably do the same on this one actually as well because uh, this is going to have to be painted a white gloss and because it's going to be you know basically it's a fiberglass plane um it, so uh you know with basically it was fiberglass with a clear coat i'm gonna have to make sure that is all nice and smooth to get a nice glossy finish on that one so uh let's get a bit more kitchen roll out and then uh give this a crack with uh the floor polish uh whereabouts is it there oh actually let's hope that this doesn't all start gumming up again because uh, over the last 24 48 hours i've been putting all sorts of junk through this airbrush so hopefully just get out whatever that was
And then, uh, yeah, it will basically be a case of doing this um, and working out what we're doing next. I have actually now written out a to-do list for this now, so I can actually try to keep track of what I'm actually doing. Uh, get that on. Oh, I should probably get gloved up again. Use a different glove this time. Bodes well when you can't even get a glove on properly. Seriously, I'm going to lose that mod all the way on. Turning it around. I think it was Carfter said that's one model that if you drop on the floor, you could actually lose their entire model to the carpet monster. Okay, I've put a bit to. I have not connected it to that. <laughs> I haven't actually plugged in the airline yet. Right, and I've filled that little thing right up to the top. And let's put a bit back. A few drips. There we go. So let's start on the bottom. So what I find just to um, come on, I, I try my best, Cube Jam. I do try my best. I try to make it entertaining. Oh, you know, but pretending to connect my airbrush, you know, deliberately putting all the wrong chemicals through my airbrush so it gums up. You know. So just a sort of a light dusting with this. You can kind of flood it on, actually, and it does, um, does level. If necessary, you can go over and give it a second coat and it will eat into itself. Don't know if that's the correct phrase. Um, whilst I'm there, let me just grab ooh, God, that. Because I want to stick a bit on that as well. thought about my holding options before I started but that's fine Ooh, right so I'll just put a bit on there we'll just need to Put a touch more in there. I probably shouldn't have taken out those final, those couple little uh, extra drips. That would have all, all I needed. flooded that on there but never mind okay so what I want to do is to leave this um, a good bit of time to dry and set basically I have actually also tried this on the floor, followed the instructions just to see what it, you know, see what it was like on a floor in it. Yeah, I must admit it did make the kitchen floor a bit more shiny. 
so it's probably a, that's talking is shiny that's probably a bit more shiny now but it is still wet as well so that I'll find should give me a more of a not a real shiny gloss coat but should give quite a good um, sort of satiny sort of shine a sheen to it um, a sheeny glow hopefully that's the plan at least uh, let's have a bite of digestive biscuit so that was it hardly any of that um, yeah, I'm basically down to no well, I'm still over the um, the where the handle the top of the handle and I've had this for quite a while now and as I say even even done the kitchen floor with it just for a giggle one day and it's been you know used on quite a few models over the years I've got to say for um you know all of that for less than an airfix starter kit from Lidl in a pre-Christmas sale oh well, I'm just going to get my tick sheet and lose my phone in the box. So then, I have um, 109 corrected paintwork tick, painted yellow. Oh, I still need to do it. I won't tick that off yet. Leave that rub down and done the pledge. Right. On the quickie, done the filler, done some rescribing, done some priming. Don't want to do anything more on that because. Um, the primer, I do want to wait for it to cure before I actually do anything else. So I will need to give it a bit of a rub down. Very small, it's going to be very fiddly to rub down. But because I've done some filling on the bottom, and actually I may need to do a little bit more. Actually, I don't know. I'll wait for it to dry. Now it might be, I don't know how well this is going to show because this is... Um, I used white filler on white on very light coloured resin and then I've um, you know obviously primed it in white but just where that wing is across goes across there's um I had to do some filler in there and it's a bit white and I'm not too sure whether it's the white of the filler showing through or because that's taking a little bit longer for it to dry or whether it is actually a gap there but it does look like I might just need to do um the filler as it's dried might have just sunk back a little bit actually that would be annoying if it has so um yeah there we are on that oh just want to put a bit of cleaner through here actually let's do the ipa first of all because that seemed to work just now um yeah i think what i probably should do is at some point is to get different and just do a little um get a little palette and just put different things in different palettes and then mix different palettes with different things a little go you know going across sort of like um just to see which ones um you know make gloop and which ones are fine Well, that's all starting to look a bit more shiny as well. So I think the I say don't think the rub down was needed, but I don't think it hurt either. But I think what I was think um, is when it comes to doing the the cars, the one to God ever knows what scale it's going to be cars. Um, then actually that should give quite a good um. That's going to be interesting from my point of view because I've never really done anything with a real glossy gloss 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 finish as you know as you do with your cars because i know quite a few of you are you know car guys building cars i've never you know where you do need to have a really nice uh really nice silky smooth you know really good really good primer laid down get all that actually really rubbed down then sort of get your main top coat on there few coats that to really build up the deep color then from there you're going to want to have a really good sort of you know gloss coat on there get all that polished up um from my point of view more of a as a plain guy although you know do a bit of everything but you know quite a lot of planes stick the color on and um you know you're not looking for perfection 
on something like that because you know weathering goes on and those sort of things to be honest you know um the amount of times the good thing with modeling um sort of military stuff is you, any cock-ups you know you're hiding weathering <laughs> genuinely you know especially with that sort of mottled effect that i've got down the side of that you know got the mot mottling on there it's just you know you can i can quite easily you know um when things went a bit wrong, it's like, well, a little bit more of that there. You know, it's not like it's got to fit absolutely perfectly and stuff. Well, okay, so, um, I've got to say again, I'm kind of hitting a brick wall on stuff because I've got some bits to do, but now I can't get to them because the engine stuff is in there. Um, you can't do much on these until that sort of needs a second coat. A bit more curing. Um, Ozzy do won't let me do that. Yes, um, it's finding the balance actually, Jaffa. I'd find um, some things. I what I don't like. I'm sure I had this discussion on here before a while back. Um, is sort of like you know when people make a mistake and go, ah, battle damage. That annoys me because actually you know. No, if you've made a mistake, put in a bit of effort to correct the mistake. Don't just say battle damage. Sometimes things do go to cock, um, and you do have to sort of like try to work your way around things, and perhaps you've got to then be creative. But just to kind of say, you know, the amount of times people, oh, I dropped it, you know, banged it. Oh, okay, let's burn some holes in it and call it battle. No, no, it's, you know, fix your mistake. Unless something's absolutely knackered, you know, there's no reason to actually, you know, to say something's battle damage. Um, you know, when it's normally fixable, to be honest. Uh, again, that's just my thinking with that. Um, however, there's also some things where, when doing like this plane and you've got mottling on there, um, if you've got something and it kind of goes a little bit over, you can kind of go, okay, when I, I mean, it probably happened with this, you know, when I was putting on the dark grey, some of the mottling went a little bit, um, uh, some of the bits, I, no, I, that was it, I had um, a blob where obviously too much, um, pulled back a little bit too much, kept the airbrush in the area for too long. <coughs> so the paint went a bit down too thick and then I suddenly got that spidering where the air pressure just suddenly started blowing and I got that little spidering effect. And I then realized that actually what I could do is instead of panicking, when I then went to put the green on, I just then put a green blob over that bit where this, the spidering was. So, I mean, that was a way to sort of cover things up, but you know, that was literally covering things up. Uh, but you could, I could use the cam to my advantage on that one. Um, but what I mean is sort of doing a, doing something like to, with a car to perfection, like Cube Jam, he sort of pulled off his masking and around his Mercedes and a load of the paint come off. You know, you can't suddenly go, ah, oh, I know, call it fire damage. No, you know, he's got to, you know, rub down, mask up, repaint. But um, yeah, I'm, I also know that feeling of being my worst critic as well because often I would do something and I because you know there's the mistake there you are aware of it uh, and especially if there is if it's a mistake that you can't do that oh that'll be fine and afterwards that's when you're then thinking oh, I wish I'd gone back and again hindsight uh, at the moment I don't think I've got anything serious that I've done with this where I've thought I wish I had not sort of done that um, but I think this just comes down from just sort of, you know, repetition, isn't it? And actually trying to want to get a model finished. This is one of the good things I find with streaming, is it means that I cannot always be a complete perfectionist with things, because otherwise I'd literally still be building the cockpit on this thing. Um, I mean, but say, I'm sick of building the cockpit, and on the first stream I've only been doing it an hour. Um, hmm. So actually I'm going to say for now, again, another short stream, in comparison to what some of the previous ones have been, so I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it up here because it was a short one today, ish, um, shortish one yesterday. But um, again, got two kits kind of on the go, but both of them are kind of getting. I mean, just because one of them's so small is it? saying that it got a whole load of photo etch to go in this thing, and a whole load more little resin pieces. So although it kind of looks like it's coming together, it's got a kind of a bit reverse. Got to build the airframe and then start detailing it so that is actually going to take a while to do the little small stuff little photo etch which is going to be really fiddly because it's a really tough shoot to photo etch as well and not like the edward stuff that would just like bend up nicely uh, and then all those little extra bits have got to be painted and dropped in so it should be um quite oh, i'm not looking forward to it it's 
<laughs> it was one of those ones that, oh, that'll be fun, that'll be a giggle. And as you sort of go through it, you go, oh, that is actually, yeah, that, that joke backfired. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I reckon we're going to call that there, and then um, we'll see if anyone else is on, because yesterday, that was the embarrassing, th well, I say embarrassing thing, I went to no one. There was two people who literally finished just as I was uh, wrapping up as well. Hello, I missed all of tonight's stream, unfortunately. <laughs> Oh, this is a, oh, this is a, um, typical. Sorry, Zed. I'm actually just wrapping up. I will just explain what I've done for you. Um, so basically, um, main focus as well was on the uh, 109. So what I did, I'd actually, if you were, yeah, you were watching yesterday, I think, is when I'd done the took the masking off. I realised that actually I'd missed a little bit of the grey um, when I'd put the grey on first. So I'm trying to be careful with this because it's uh, still wet. So this afternoon I touched up that's not got the shine on. So this afternoon, just to save time, I've done a little bit of touching up on there. So today um, I gave it um, a bit of a rub, painted some bits of yellow, um, which needs to go on there, like the cowling and stuff. Gave it a bit of a rub down, not because it needed it, I just felt like it should do. Uh, then put some... Um, uh, uh, floor polish on there and then uh, primed primed my little uh, resin kit as well so um, a few little other little odds and sods sort of things but that's the that's the main takeaway bits of this so uh, that was a great stream uh, if you did mess up with my mind by changing planes uh, the minute my back was turned sorry about I was yeah I was actually thinking it would be I do want to try to have like two main builds on. I know I said this a while back. So what I can be doing is as one bit starts drying on one thing, I can go to, but both of these are at stages where they're literally just need to do stuff and then leave it for a while to dry. So I've now got that on there and that's all looking a bit shiny. So um, I'll leave that to dry properly and harden and cure. That'll give me a good basis. So that next time round decals and not only do the decals detail up the engine and things as well, once that's all done, it'll be a case of pretty much weather it, stick the gear on the bottom and call it done, which would be nice. And um, photo etch um, internal cockpits and painting and those sort of things on there for the little quickie. So we'll see if it was um, if it will be quick. Oh, and of course, um, it was a cup of tea, two digestive biscuits and four bits of chocolate. I've only had one of the digestives and none of the chocolate yet, actually. But I might have a nibble of that in a moment. And I, of course, aired my new jingle. Um, actually, I'm going to play it again just because Zed's missed it. Otto might have missed it. I'm going to do it. Sing along. There we go. That was my brand new jingle for me cup of tea. <laughs> hope you liked it yeah also oh cheers for pointing that out as well i noticed that earlier um it's yeah a little silly thing because everyone but my, my i'm more popular <laughs> more people follow seem to follow me to <laughs> see me get served a cup of tea and a couple of biscuits than the actual models that i do um but yeah i noticed that i noticed that um this morning actually that i'm on 98 followers um it's a two away from the 100 so i was thinking that i need to try to work something out yeah it's I mean, cheers, Ed. It's it is a very tongue-in-cheek. Let's put it that way. It's not, uh, but that's like all my sort of jingles and stuff. It is a bit, it's a little bit, you know, a bit silly. Might as well because that's what I do. But um, yeah, notice I'm two away from the hundred. I don't think anything happens when you get to a hundred. I don't think Twitch unlocks stuff like when you get to fifty, you can then start doing things. I don't think I don't know if anything else happens. I think it's just a nice little, you know, it'd be a round number. So I was thinking I might try and do something when I do get to 100, just um, because I might as well. So anyway, I will pop that on that. So, um, and uh, I mean, that is just, it's just pathetic, isn't it? Oh, that's going to be, so yeah, I need to work out what I'm going to do, because it'd be nice just to do a little something. I don't know what yet, just, to, just when I hit the 100 um, round number. Um, it'd be fun. But anyway, let's have a look to see if anyone is um anyone is else uh, is on streaming because last night when i wrapped up literally there was no 
no one on um oh bart bandy's on no wonder it's quiet everyone's probably over there i know he was on earlier i didn't think he would be on uh you could celebrate by cleaning your airbrush that is a very good point or i could celebrate by not cleaning my airbrush <laughs> um you can apply to be affiliate that's that's the 51 when you get to um um jaffa that's the to get yeah everything seems to one 50 is the magic number it seems on twitch so um yeah that's the that's the magic number there so i'll tell you what let's go and annoy bart i thought he'd i thought he'd actually wrapped up by now before i started i mean i'd normally do start streaming around 6 30 on a sunday so um don't feel too bad right so what we'll do we'll pop over and say hello to bart um see what he's up to i'm just going to change my audio settings what's he doing if he's making a bloody 109 that's gonna oh, i don't know well anyway right let's go and annoy but um could, yeah it's um but i don't know if anything else happens at 100 i don't know we'll see cool so we'll pop over cheers um i'm going to be back on tuesday tuesday evening about 6 30 give or take a little bit either way that's the plan at least and then it will be decals and also detailing up the 109 as well uh, with the engine those sort of things and um yeah having a bit more fun like that anyway cheers catch you all have a great one and uh, see you on tuesday thanks again